Sometimes, children need to have medical tests or treatments that may hurt, such as getting an injection, having blood drawn, or a catheter placed. We know from decades of research and clinical experience that providing intentional and skilled distraction can help children cope through procedures and feel less pain. Successful use of distraction is a skill that is learned and improved through practice. This short video will help you learn the key elements of distraction coaching and teach you how to use this simple yet effective intervention with children. The key elements to providing effective distraction coaching to children are make a plan that includes the child and family, establish your role as distraction coach, respond to the child's cues, and stay focused on being an effective distraction coach. Make a plan. Before the procedure starts, make a plan that includes pain prevention strategies, comfort positioning, and distraction. Start by asking the parent and child what worked best during previous procedures for reducing pain and anxiety. Determine the best form of analgesia for the procedure, such as numbing agents or commercial projects that use cold and vibrations to interfere with pain sensations. Some of these therapies require time to take effect, so it's important to plan ahead and let everyone on the team know the time frame. If possible, have the child positioned upright for the procedure. A parent or other trusted person may assist with comfort positioning and provide a supportive presence for the child. Then plan your distraction strategy. Include the parent and child in selecting a few novel and engaging items or things to do. Choose items that are consistent with the child's developmental and functional abilities. For infants and toddlers, use singing or sounds, rhythmic gentle rocking or padding, or sensory toys that light up or vibrate. Toddlers might like engaging songs like wheels on the bus or books that make noises. For preschool children, choose distractors that involve the child in physical activity, such as blowing or popping bubbles, action books, and finger play games. Breathing games using a pinwheel or pretending to blow up an imaginary balloon are good to help young children relax. For school-age children, silly toys, seek-and-find books, and novelty toys can keep their attention. They might like to be involved in guessing games, such as 20 questions. School-age children can usually follow your instructions on deep breathing to help reduce distress. For teenagers, involve them in conversations about pets, sports, or books that bring up pleasant memories or calming images. For teens who don't want to converse, a squeeze ball or listening to their preferred music can be distracting. Older children may want to select their own distraction techniques, but may require prompting to focus on distraction during the procedure. Finally, developmentally appropriate interactive video games or apps on a tablet or smartphone are specifically designed to capture and hold a child's attention. They can be used to engage toddlers to teenagers. Plan to have at least three distraction items or activities that you could use during the procedure. For children who have difficulty maintaining attention, have a few additional items to use if needed. Make sure you have ready access to the items before the procedure begins and place some distraction items out of the child's sight so that you can introduce something new if you lose the child's attention. Part of your planning should include asking the child if they would rather look away from the procedure or watch. If the child wants to look away, block the sight of the procedure by placing a book or tablet in the child's line of view. For children who want to watch, plan on offering quick peeks and then redirect the child back to distraction. Note that the child's preference to look might change during the procedure and adjust your coaching as needed. Establish your role as distraction coach. It's very important that you, as the designated distraction coach, are the one voice that the child hears during the procedure. Introduce yourself as the child's distraction coach and tell everyone in the room that you will be engaging the child's attention throughout the procedure. All medical personnel and family members need to support your role in capturing and maintaining the child's attention. 
it may be necessary to ask non-essential staff to step out of the room. Ensure the environment is calm before the procedure starts so that the child stays focused. Close the door. If the TV is not intentionally being used for distraction, turn it off. Ask everyone in the room to limit side conversations. When you're ready, make sure that you are positioned so that you can make eye contact with the child. Use the child's name to ensure they're listening, then give direction. Have the child practice any breathing techniques that you might want to use. Begin to engage the child in distraction before the procedure begins. Respond to the child's cues. During the procedure, be continually aware of when the distraction is working and when the child's attention has been lost. If you feel the child's attention drifting from the distraction, direct the child to take some deep breaths to refocus attention, and then try another distraction item. Use clear directions guiding the child to engage with the distraction item. Try to vary the tone of your voice. A soothing voice can be used to calm the child. An energetic tone can be used to recapture attention. Distraction can help reduce the amount of distress the child feels, but it doesn't block out all of the uncomfortable sensations or pain. Children need to express their feelings. Be accepting if the child cries. A child who is upset may be able to follow a specific instruction such as squeezing a parent's hand or a soft toy when prompted. If the child is able to pay attention to you and respond to your requests, then the child is benefiting from distraction. Distraction can be helpful for almost all children, especially when it's individualized to the child's specific development and needs. Consider things such as their previous experience during procedures and diagnoses such as autism attention deficit, or developmental delay. Keep in mind that children of any age may have difficulty coping. Stay focused on being an effective distraction coach. Staying focused on distraction can be difficult for the coach as well as the child. Maintain a concentrated effort to engage the child. This seems intuitive, but it takes skill and practice. Your only job as the designated coach is to help the child remain calm and engaged in distraction during the procedure. At critical points in the procedure, such as when a needle is inserted, the child may lose focus. It's hard to see a child in distress. You may feel the urge to reassure and tell the child that everything will be okay, but research shows that reassurance often upsets the child and escalates distress behaviors. Instead, Provide specific instructions to the child, such as, it's really important for you to hold your arm still right now, or squeeze my hand as hard as you can, or breathe in through your nose as deep as you can. Keep working with the child and introduce other distraction items when you've recaptured the child's attention until the procedure is completely done. Stay calm and confident. Remember to praise positive behaviors like trying to hold still or paying attention to a distraction strategy. Although medical procedures for children may be unavoidable, distraction coaching reduces pain, anxiety, and distress, as well as teaching children coping strategies. Children and their families will benefit from your commitment to learning and practicing distraction strategies. Definitely distraction is necessary in order to perform procedures successfully and help the child relax because often these kids have to come back time and again. And the last thing we want is for them to dread coming to the hospital. So it makes all the difference in the world. I thought today we haven't had that done before with the distraction and it just helped take her mind off of it. She didn't seem so anxious. There wasn't a tear shed. It was very, very smooth. I love being able to walk into a room and change the outlook. So walk into a room um, where the child uh, could be anxious or they've had a traumatic experience and I love being able to um, use my tools and use my coping techniques to turn that around so that it's a positive experience and not negative.
I use some of my coworkers to blow bubbles. I want them to chit chat. I need them to do a lot of distractions because whoever has the needle, that's the one who needs to focus on the blood sample. So what I'll do is use teamwork to help me do distraction for each child if needed. I always like to start, especially with the younger age, I like to start with those bubbles and spinner toys because it grasps their attention. Um, even as they're walking into the room, um, I'll start blowing bubbles so that they can see that I'm a fun person. I'm not gonna do anything that hurts. I would advocate for giving kids jobs. So asking them, giving them control, making sure they know what their jobs are, um, holding still and breathing, or whatever you need them to do in order to cooperate pr for the procedure, and then allowing them to choose whatever play intervention they want. Do they want to look at a book? Do they want to blow bubbles? Um, and trying to engage them before playing, during play, or during the procedure, and then playing after.